Hey guys, this is Nathan and welcome back to Sevtech Ages. So to start out with today, I was trying to figure out a better way to make clay balls into clay blocks. Of course, we've been able to use this uh, horsepower presser to make those in the past, but that is very slow and dependent on the speed of the horse that you're using. Now I noticed that there is something called hardcore packing here and uh, I couldn't figure out how to make this work. I couldn't really find anything online, but what I found was that we have to push, oh, and there goes wandering one. We have to push these clay balls into a confined space. So for that, I set up this little system here. So I have two pistons here. I have one here that is pushing this way and this one is a sticky piston and it is pushing a block over here. So if we turn this clock on and I made a much simpler clock than I had before. So if we turn this on, this is 100% adjustable. If we run at full speed, the thing uh, doesn't, it'll burn out. But this one here won't even work at that speed. So uh, yeah, we need to slow down a little more. So that's still too fast. Looks like we do have to run it like this. But now the way that this works, we drop the stuff in here, this piston packs it, and then that one pushes the stuff out of the way. Now in order to make this work, we actually have to have blocks on top of this. So it will push the stuff into a hole, and then clay blocks start popping up. Now that works great to make the blocks, but to pick them up you have to have silk touch. So I do have this steel leaf pick that I got with silk touch. And so I can pick up clay blocks with this. So basically what I do is I just sit here and pick up the clay blocks until it stops pushing. And once it stops pushing, it has used up all the clay balls. Then I just grab the rest of these. And yes, I know this is a very inefficient use of this pick, but it's the only tool that I have with silk touch. So I'll pick up all but that last one because we do require a solid area where that packing is taken care of. But so doing that, I have gotten 47 blocks of clay so far. If I pick this one up, I would have 48. And the reason that I'm making those is I want to make some aqueducts. And these take three blocks of clay for each three of those. And what I'm going to do with that, I have extended this wall down a little bit further and I want to keep it going this way. And so what I want to do is take this stream that I have here and redirect it a little bit and then put aqueducts to carry the water out this way a little bit and then have it just fall into this stream again. So yeah, that's why I'm making it. I'm also thinking I will take this path and run it along this side of the warehouse and then we'll dip down a little to go under the aqueducts and I think that's kind of a neat idea but so I am going to get going on that I also need to clean up a little bit of this other stuff I know these uh, rushes looked really good when we were in earlier ages but yeah it is not gonna be quite the thing that we want anymore now to be in line with that stream we need to be somewhere over here so I am going to redirect the stream to come out this way a little bit, and then we'll take the aqueducts the rest of the way here. So yep, yeah, I'm going to get that all taken care of, and then I'll be back. So I've gotten a whole bunch of work done here. So as we approach the town, we start to see a cobblestone path. So I transitioned our regular path block path into cobblestone, made a nice downward run into here and are you freaking kidding all right well we'll go ahead and go sleep i wanted to show this at night but yeah rain sucks so we'll go ahead and get rid of the rain but uh yeah so i've got that nice path there i also cleaned up my clay block thing i did run a whole bunch more clay through there I got more than two stacks. I think I ended up doing a total of three stacks of clay blocks. So that's a lot of clay. But 
So I extended this around, made the path here. And so this is the exact same pattern that we have over here. And then we go down a little bit, oops. Okay, there's a cobblestone wall there. But we go down a little bit to go underneath the aqueduct and then back up and we're back up at the path height. Now I added a few more trees in this area and some grass, things like that, just to kind of make this area feel a little different. And also I updated to iron lanterns here on this bridge, but when I set them on top of the oak fences, it just looked stupid. So I decided instead I would put some iron bars underneath them. Looks a little nicer. I tried putting iron bars on the whole bridge top, but because you can walk over iron bars, that didn't work out too good. Now I also replaced the uh, wooden lanterns here with the iron ones. And I did that over here on the uh, blacksmith area, the sides of the warehouse. So just everywhere now it is iron lanterns instead of the, the wooden ones. But so yeah, we have this all set up now. I think it's looking really nice. And you can definitely tell there's going to be a spot here for building. I just have not decided what I want to do in that spot yet. But the reason I'm going off in this direction is because we need to do a whole bunch more stuff with astral sorcery. So you can see that I've torn down my, uh, whatever, the, the, oh dang it, the celestial altar and its supporting structures that were up in the air. And we are going to try to build that down here and get enough of the, uh, not, I was going to say celestial, but no, spectral relays. We're going to try to get enough of the spectral relays to get that altar filled completely when we uh, have nighttime. So that's going to take a little bit of thought. Now, of course, a lot of this stuff is going to be built out of marble. So I'm going to have to try to find some blocks that will complement the marble without being too overpowering because I don't just want to make one big block of marble here. That would look ugly. So got to try to figure out a block palette for that. It may take a little bit to figure out, but of course we have a large amount of uh, star power in this area and it kind of goes out into the water. So we may have to make some support structures that run down to the bottom of the river and uh, allow our buildings to kind of stay in that area and maybe we can set up some spectral relays that can beam the light to other places but i know astral sorcery is going to take a lot of space now i was very unhappy i went and looked up on top of this mountain to see if we had any good spots for starlight and there's none anywhere up there that would have been the ideal location we could have built an observatory up there and we would have seen it from everywhere. I think I might still do that anyway, but if we could have had astral sorcery up there, I think it would have been so cool. But so, yeah, I've got to figure out what blocks we're going to be using alongside the marble and sooty marble. And uh, once I get something figured out, I will be back. Well, I decided for now that we're just going to hold off on building anything here because as we get further and further into astral sorcery, we're going to have to add more and more of these areas here like this. So yeah, we'll just wait until we have a decent setup and then we'll decide what we're going to do. So I'm back down here on ground level. I made three more of these spectral relays and that is getting us a fair amount of starlight power in this celestial altar, but we need to go a long way back in what we are doing so not discovery but exploration so back here there is a little bit of something that we totally glossed over didn't even look at and that is the looking glass so despite despite the night sky yeah despite the night sky constantly shifting all the time certain recurring patterns and shapes show up on a regular basis Many of these shapes bear a close resemblance to the patterns on the constellation papers found in shrine ruins, which we don't have shrine ruins. While no one is sure of their importance yet, the shapes of m such constellations were important enough for observers of old to mark it in great detail. 
it might be prudent for a scholar to mark and familiarize themselves with these patterns in the sky. So we already know how to make the glass lens, and then we need to make the looking glass, which is pretty simple, just some sticks, gold, some type of wood, and a lens. The looking glass, despite being a rather rudimentary device, goes a long way towards the process of investigating the night sky. In order to locate and trace constellations, a clear view of the night sky is absolutely necessary, and one must at least have discovered the constellation before on paper. Once a possible pattern is found, the view, of the view angle of the telescope can be fixed by sneaking. The pattern of stars can then be traced by using left click to draw lines between them. So I am going to have to go and get my constellation paper that I had. Wait, wait, no, the constellation paper is right here. So we have a Vetus in here, but I do need to go grab some gold and some sticks because I don't have those with me. I have everything else. But so we'll quickly run in here and grab some gold. So gold ingots, we'll just grab a whole bunch of those. Don't know if we'll need more gold for later on. I know we needed some gold nuggets for those pedestals and then we need some sticks. So that should be good enough for that. And yeah, as I walk around this place now, it's looking more and more like a town. And I guess I still have my spawnable spaces turned on. I don't know why these register as spawnable spaces. There is half a block and sometimes a quarter of a block of space and it's highly illuminated, but whatever. So now we need to grab a lens and some planks. So we need to put a plank in this corner, gold ingot here, four sticks. Okay, that was not what I wanted to do. And then this, and that's going to make our looking glass. So we'll go ahead and make that real quick. And then we should be able to look around the sky. So now if we take this and right click, yeah, we're a little bit too close to the altar. So if we're right next to a block, we can't see anything. So uh, we want to be out away from things. So we'll look around and that is a constellation, but I'm not sure which one it is. And so, or maybe it's not. So we need to try to locate constellations I am not sure what I'm looking for. So let's take a look at what a Vetus looks like. Can we do that here? So it's an interesting shape. So yeah, I've got to look around here for a while and see if I can find that. Oh, wait, what? It, what are you? You are definitely a constellation but I don't think you're the one that we're looking for. So yeah, we've got to look around here for a while and yes, we can look at things that are, <laughs> we can look through things and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so we definitely have this one and I'm not sure what it is. So got to look around, see if I can find another one. At least I don't think that's a Vetus doesn't look like what I had. So there's seven stars in that one. And no, this has nine stars in it. So that is definitely not what I am looking for. So let me look around here for a while, see if I can find another one. And then I'll be back. So I realized what the issue is here. So we are now into the attunement chapter and we have the telescope. So the looking glass was all good and fine, but holding still all the time is exhausting and doesn't give a good view. Additionally, it's difficult to make out more than one constellation at a time in one night. So we were only able to see one constellation. That one that I saw was not the one that I was looking for. Also, the one that I am seeing on this night is not the one that I'm looking for. So discovering everything those constellation papers show would take forever. So also, I can't make more constellation papers unless I want to do some necronomical stuff. And I don't want to do that right now. 
the telescope is going to need a fixture for this. That way you should it should be possible to look deeper into the sky, finding stars and constellations that are even further away. So we need three sticks, two gold, one plank, and our looking glass for this. And this is going to become a more permanent fixture. So two gold, three sticks, one plank, and the looking glass. So that's going to give us the telescope. Let's go ahead and make that. And we can place this thing on the ground somewhere. So, it may take a little while, I don't know. There we go. So there's our telescope. I'm going to come out here somewhere. Right here looks like a good spot. So we're going to do this and... What? Okay, how do we... How do we uh, move things around on the... I, what is... Okay, is there anything more here? Oh yes, there is. Discovering constellations is nearly the same as with the looking glass. A clear view of the night sky when looking through it is required. It's also possible to look at one section of the sky at a time by rotating the telescope's direction with the arrows on the left and right. What? what? Drawing outside the telescope frame races on okay well hmm well let's see here so oh okay arrows okay so there's one uh, that does not look like what I'm looking for um, you don't look like what I'm looking for either so it's this one I don't even see one in that one. Oh, here it is. Here it is. All right. So we want to go from there to there, from there to there, there to there, there, there. And we go here, here, and here. And discovered constellation Avetus. So now if we look up at the sky, we should actually see it if it's up here, I think. I don't see it though. But so we actually did discover a constellation. So I need to figure out how to make more of those constellation papers. Now looking at these, we can make them with iridescent crafting in the iridescent altar, but we're not ready for that yet. But we can specifically make those, but the Necronomical Ritual will give us a blank one and I'm not sure how they work or n what goes on with that but that would take a huge amount of aquamarine and yeah I it's either a lot of aquamarine or a lot of stardust so either way we're kind of in a bad situation so yeah at least we managed to find one constellation so I have no it might be behind the uh, the mountain there but so yeah pretty much every spot that we turn the telescope to shows some constellation so yeah I suppose I'm either gonna have to figure out how to get us up to the iridescent altar or my less favored choice would be to go and do some necronomical rituals but anyway you look at it we found that one, so uh, yeah, let's go ahead and drop a Vetus back in here, and it has a green line on it now. Nice. So, constellations, we have a Vetus. Being exposed to focused light of this constellation, flowers and plants close, close to the source are flourishing and grow much faster. So, we could set something up to make high-speed growth. Oh, and it shows us, this really only shows up, well, no, it shows up in all. Yeah, <laughs> this shows how to make that. Oh my God. So we do, I think I am gonna try to figure out how to 
get to the iridescent altar next. So, yep, I'm going to see what I can figure out there, and I'll be back. So one thing that it looks like we need to do is to make our crystals larger. So to do that, you just soak them in a bucket of liquid starlight until the starlight disappears. So I've got three of them here that have a purity over 90, and I'm just trying to make them grow, but yeah, this is going to use up some of our liquid starlight that we have here. So after these guys grow again, I'm also going to look, okay, this one just finished. So I'm also gonna kind of look at getting a little bit better stuff with this light well. So when I tossed this in there, it was at a size of 283. It is now at a size of 300. So it did not go up much, but it did go up some. So then we'll just toss it back in there again. Now these guys were 30311, I think. But uh, let's take a look at these. No, it's two, two something. Okay, so 400. I wonder why that is orange. Does that mean that we cannot make that one any bigger anymore? That is a distinct possibility. So looks like 400s are the largest size. Oh, so the celestial crystals are the only thing that's going to go over a size 400. And they can go to a 900. Okay, so we are trying to get to a size 400 crystal, which we have one. So let's go ahead and get these other two up to a size 400. And I might grab at least one more. Now most of the purities on these crystals are quite bad, but I saw several in the 80s. There was one that was 80. Another one that was 80, 84, that sounds good. And this has a size of 111 to start out with, very small. So we'll go ahead and get this one to grow and we'll just keep working our way up. So, yep, I want to have some pure crystals for what we're going to be doing next, but uh, yeah, I guess we'll be using up some liquid starlight. So I've got a couple of crystals fully grown. I also brought my grindstone over here did a little cutting on those and so now we have cutting of 100 and size of 400. So one thing that I will say is be very careful with this grindstone if you are not checking it periodically to find out how big it is and uh, where it's at on its cutting it will just break and disappear. So you got to be really careful with that. But so we need to keep going forward and the next thing that I want to do is the crystal lens. Bending starlight simply from a source to a location might not be enough. The source might be at an unfitting place, or the destination from the starlight is just too far away. A brilliant yet obvious or seemingly obvious idea comes to mind. Redirecting and refocusing the starlight via a network of lenses might provide enough reach to direct it wherever needed. So we need to make ourselves a lens here. This is going to require some aquamarine, a crystal of some kind, and this is where we want a good crystal. So I got a decent clarity crystal and a big one at that, and then we have some glass lenses, gold, we need some logs, and then some ruined marble. And I don't know what that sound was there, but whatever. So now we're going to go in here and we need a little bit more starlight, but our starlight is going up because of that. So let's go ahead and just wait a bit more. Come on. Just a little more. Almost. The sun is warming up. What? Oh, sorry. Saw Mega Mine today, so. All right. Well, let's go ahead and turn that on. No. There we go. Turn that on and make ourselves a lens. Now, what we're going to be doing with that is redirecting it onto some iron ore. But to do that redirection, we have to do a little bit of something else. Oh, and that actually made five lenses. Holy good God. So I have no idea how to place these down, but we'll just kind of place them around here. And we'll be able to redirect these here in a little bit. But so to redirect them, we need to make the linking tool. So if we look at the astral tome again, the linking tool.
Recalling the slight, slightly pulling effects aquamarines have on liquid starlight, having multiple of those condensed into one crystal might provide enough to direct and focus the raw rays of starlight in a more organized manner. Fusing them together with a rock crystal might prove a bit tedious without sufficient starlight. Luckily, the newly upgraded altar might help a bit to that end. So we need to make this thing, and then here is the explanation of how to use it. But, uh, yeah, I haven't exactly read all of that. But anyway, you look at it. To make this linking tool, we need two logs, four sticks, a crystal, and some aquamarine. Now, I have taken the absolute worst purity crystal that I have for this because I don't think that it's going to make any difference. So we'll go ahead and put all of this together. We should have all of our ingredients. Oh, whoops. It helps if we put them in the right order. And so now we should get our linking tool. So what we're going to be trying to do with this iron ore is to make star metal ore. So the starlight is supposed to shine on a mundane iron for a while and then we can make the star... Oh, selected lens. Okay, linked lens to the block. Um, I don't see anything happening there. Oh, do we have to go through those? What? Linked lens to lens. Linked lens to a block. Okay, well that one turned. So how do we go about using these? Needs a clear line of sight, so we can't have anything in the way. Hmm. Well, there's definitely nothing in the way. This one didn't turn either. I don't know. The first one turned. I can see that. Well, let's see here. However, holding the crystal, the created crystal with bare hands, with the crystal, thinking tool takes the shape of wand. Select the source of starlight. Oh, we do need something else. So, we need to figure out a collector crystal. Alright, so what do we do with this? Um, <laughs> um, but, uh, see, that's where I would think this should be. Can we link these? No. Okay, well, can we pick this back up? What if we take a few of these? Kind of move... Uh, we'll just grab everything. Sorry for the derpiness, but I have no freaking clue what I'm doing with this. So let's go ahead and head up here. And I know there's a lot of starlight in this area. There is no doubt about that. So we'll go ahead and grab this and that. We're going to place our iron ore and a couple of lenses here. I have no idea. So, can we? We can't. So, that lens will go to that block, but. Oh, wait. I see. It's continually trying to turn that lens. Whoa! Okay, so we will... Okay... How do I get it to stop linking that lens? This is rather annoying. Yeah, it points at the next lens. What the heck? How do I get it to not? No, stop, stop it. 
keeps trying to look at this lens. How do we... Stopped linking. Okay, so we have to mouse off of it? Okay. Okay. I still don't see anything happening, but whatever. We can't link these guys. So yeah, we've got to figure out some way to collect starlight. What? All right, let me do some more research. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to do this right now because we need to get one of these celestial collector crystals set up. And the only way to make these is with an attuned celestial crystal. And that means we're gonna to have to go through the attunement process here in the book. So, We'll be starting with alignment charge, going through attunement to crystal attunement, and then we can get a few other things here. But uh, yeah, we're not going to have time to do that today because we're out of time. So I'm going to say thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to give a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any thoughts about what I've been working on or something that you would like to see, be sure to leave that down in the comments. Be sure to check, check out Apache and Wandering One. Links are in the description. And I will see you next time. Bye.